Ladies and gentlemen, better late than never, I decided to update my Restoration Shaman Healing Guide for Raids. As quite a few things changed since my last guide for the last year. As you probably know my guild fell apart so I'm not hardcore raiding this year but I went into this heroic bug. And I managed to get quite good results with the build and the skills that I'm going to show you in this guide including a 95% parse on the heroic console of dreams fight. So without further ado let's start with the main skills that you're gonna be casting all the time. One of the main pillars in your gameplay is still going to be one of the most efficient healing spells in the game, Riptide. Not only it's efficient but it heals for a lot after the most recent buffs, it's further increased by your 4 piece tier set bonus that we're gonna mention in just a second. And it has a huge synergy with many of your other skills and talents. Once you cast a Riptide you get 2 stacks of Tidal Waves which buffs your next 2 spells that you're going to be casting. You'll be healing for more if your target already has the hot from the Riptide ticking on them and for every Riptide that you have spread in the raid your heals are just a percentage more effective. You can also run a talent that increases the duration of the Riptide which again connected to your 4 piece tier set bonus increases the chance for it to spread to additional targets. And considering that you have 2 charges of it your main goal is basically spreading as much Riptides to as many people in the raid as possible, buffing your other spells and contributing to about 10-15% to from your overall healing at the end. Once you cast your Riptide you're buffing several different spells including Healing Wave and Healing Surge but you're not going to be using those too much in the raid, you're primarily going to be using the Chain Heal. It's an AoE smart heal which also has quite a long cast time but as we already mentioned there's the Tidal Waves talent which reduces that cast time significantly. On top of that you have a whole bunch of other talents that complement the chain heal starting with Ancestral Reach which just increases the healing amount and makes it jump to additional target. Tidebringer that further reduces the cast time of chain heal significantly every 8 seconds. The tooltip on the screen is not correct and then you have high tide. After you spend certain amount of mana your next 2 chain heals are buffed and they do not lose healing with each subsequent jump. All of this makes chain heal your most valuable spell which contributes to about one third of your overall healing. With the only downside being the high mana cost and the short cast time which can get you into a mana trouble quite fast and quite often. So the big advice that I can give you here is use your mana tight early so you can use it again later on in the fight and use your mana potions again as early as possible so you could possibly get a second one in a longer fight. Moving on another button that you'll be pressing all the time on cooldown is your healing rain spell. You place it on the ground and it heals everyone in sight and since people are stacked most of the time it brings a lot of value to the table. And it also contributes to the deluge talent that I showed you earlier, you're healing targets inside of your healing rain and with riptide ticking on them for more. There's two more talents that you can pick, acid rain adds a damage component to the healing of the healing rain, which is great because it gives you a lot of passive damage keeping that up all the time. And overflowing shores adds initial heal to the targets within the healing rain and increases the radius on the ground. Now you can pick both but usually we don't have enough points for both those talents so we have to limit ourselves to just one of them. Honestly the healing from overflowing shorts is quite insignificant so the only real benefit is the increased radius and you might as well pick acid rain instead. But then depending on the level of the content that you're running your healer damage might also be insignificant and irrelevant so there's no wrong choice here but you do need to pick one of them so you can progress further down the talent tree. Yet another spell on short cooldown that you'll be pressing all the time is called unleash life. This is a small instant heal that buffs your next spell in a different way depending on the spell that you choose. Naturally the question what do I combine this with? comes to mind and the short answer is just use this spell and it's going to bring a lot of value to you no matter what you combine it with. However if you want to min max healing rain is a very good target for unleash life and the other pretty good candidate is chain heal especially if you have a high tide proc. Combining these two together makes you feel like a literal god. 
And then finally there is one more button that you'll be pressing a lot and this is the Cloudburst totem. Short disclaimer here, you can use the other node on this talent which is the Healing Stream totem. It's a much easier talent to work with and it's going to give you a lot of passing healing that you don't need to worry about. But Cloudburst could be a huge game changer if you use it correctly as it absorbs a lot of the healing that you do and then it bursts and heals everybody when you need to have that healing available. You'll be running several different talents that increase the duration of the Cloudburst, reduces its cooldown and simply makes it heal for more. So if you use this correctly, you can get absurd amount of healing stored in the Cloudburst and when you pop it, you can basically top up the whole raid. Obviously that requires a little bit more skill and a little bit more precision and if you use it correctly it's definitely going to outheal the healing stream totem. But keep in mind that if you're struggling with it and you cannot get the most value out of it, it's totally okay to switch and use the healing stream instead. That brings us to the part which we're gonna call main rotation or the spells that you're gonna be pressing all the time during the boss fight. You wanna have a cloud burst down especially before big AoE damage that you know it's coming but even if there's no such thing make sure you're not standing on two charges. Apart from that keep spreading the riptides make sure that skill is always on cooldown and spot heal different people with it as much as you can. And then in between the riptides keep healing rain down if you can combine it with unleash life and spend the rest of your time casting chain heal and if you don't have healing rain available and unleash life is up, combine that spell with chain heal as well. At this point let's also mention the tier set bonus that you're going to be using and it revolves entirely around the riptides. The two set bonus makes your initial chain heal target receive extra healing from all the riptides that you currently have ticking. Making it even more important to spread as many of these as you can. The 4 piece bonus has a flat increase in the healing value of a Riptide which is great and the other part you can pretty much ignore. It gives a small chance to cast an extra Riptide to a nearby ally but in order for that to happen you need to have the Riptide and the Tidal Reservoir ticking on the same target. If you try to play actively to activate this tier set bonus that means that you will be probably overhealing a lot while the extra percentage to spread the Riptide is basically just not worth it. So the TLDR here is enjoy the extra value for the Riptide healing and if you happen to heal somebody with a Riptide on them with your chain heal because they took some damage and that's great your Riptides can spread but don't worry about this part too much otherwise. If you do that, that also means that your gameplay style is not going to change based on the tier set bonus, you'll be getting a lot of passive value added to the Riptides and you can just continue pressing your main rotation that I showed you earlier. So far so good but obviously those are not going to be all the buttons that you're gonna be pressing. So next we're gonna be looking in some of the minor cooldowns that you have starting with Earth Shield. I'm putting it here as a cooldown because you have to press it every 30 seconds or so to recast it on yourself and on your tank. You'll be able to cast two of them because of the elemental orbit talent that you have and that's very important to maintain for several different reasons. You're running several talents that increase the healing from the earth shield significantly and since the tank is taking damage all the time you're probably gonna be taking damage a lot of the time due to the AoE you're actually going to get a lot of healing value just out from the earth shield. But on top of that, the earth and harmony talent gives you a damage reduction which is equal to 6% since this is a 2 point talent. So not only you're getting a lot of healing value but you're also going to be taking 6% less damage for the whole fight including yourself and the tank that has the earth shield which is actually huge. And speaking of shields, make sure you have water shield on yourself at all times as well because it gives you extra mana and it also refunds mana every time you land a critical strike with one of your main spells. Next on the list is another talent that is very tightly tied to the riptides, it's called Primordial Wave. Once you cast it, it puts an extra riptide on a target and then your next healing wave cleaves and heals everybody that has a riptide ticking on them. Since your main job is basically spreading riptides you can get a lot of value out of this and you can basically use it on cooldown every 45 seconds. The same stands true basically for your nature swiftness which makes your next spell instant cast 
most of the time you want to combine this with your chain heal, not only for the throughput, but because it also reduces the mana cost of the spell. And as mentioned earlier, mana could actually be an issue. I'm also putting Ancestral Guidance in this section, it's a 2 minute cooldown and increases your healing basically by 25% for 10 seconds. And I see in many people's logs that shamans just forget to press that button, myself included, quite often. But it actually brings huge value and it's not a cooldown that will probably going to be assigned to a specific place if you play in an organized team. So it's actually very important to remember to press that button so you get the value out of it. And then last but not least, we have the Earthen Wall Totem. This one is actually huge because in AoE situations it can absorb absurd amounts of damage. It has a short 1 minute cooldown and then you can also run the Totemic Recall talent which can reset its cooldown. If you do that you're also going to take call of the elements which reduces the cooldown of the Totemic Recall talent to 2 minutes. Which leads to a very simple rotation that you can follow when it comes to the Earthen Wall Totem. You drop it, you press Totemic Recall and then you drop a second one right away so you stack two of them on top of each other for the extra absorption. One minute later when Earthen Wall Totem comes off of cooldown you press it again immediately. And then after one more minute when it comes back of cooldown again your Totemic Recall is now available as well so you drop two of them all together and you keep repeating that throughout the fight. Try it out check the results and then you can come back later and thank me down in the comments. In a short summary, your cooldowns priority for this section is always keep the earth shield up, then use primordial wave and nature swiftness basically on cooldown or as often as possible, maintain your earthen wall totem combo that I just mentioned throughout the fight and don't forget to use your ancestral guidance. Obviously you want to overlap the last one with certain boss mechanics, but then you might have a different cooldown assigned for them, so as I mentioned earlier it's just better to use that than having it available throughout the whole fight, so just don't forget to press that button. And finally let's move to the major big cooldowns that can save up the whole rate, of course starting with Spirit Link Totem. Keep in mind that these cooldowns are usually assigned for a very specific moment and a very specific mechanic throughout the fight if you play in an organized team, but if you're pugging then you can drop them at your own disposal. And for Spirit Link of course you want everybody to be stacked up so you get the most value out of it. Don't forget that this spell also adds a damage reduction to everybody standing inside, 10%. So try to think when to drop it before the fight knowing the profile of the boss and when the big damage is going to be coming and people are going to be stacked. The same goes for the healing tide totem which is going to add a ticking damage healing everybody in your party no matter what their health percentage is. So this one is great for situations where there is a rot damage that hits everybody constantly for at least 10 seconds. And last but not least we have one of the biggest cooldowns, Ascendance, which transforms you for 15 seconds to do extra 80% healing to everybody around you. And it also does initial burst to add some extra healing on top of that. Keep in mind that the extra healing radiates from yourself as a shaman so your positioning is very important. Try to be in the middle of the raid so you can hit as many people as you can, as you can use this once every 3 minutes, however there is an extra talent that we are using right now. It's called Deeply Rooted Elements and it's also connected to your Riptides. They have a chance to activate Ascendance for 6 seconds and that's actually long enough window for you to get 3 even 4 casts in. So keep an eye out for this when it happens because the chance to activate it is actually accumulating. The longer you cast Riptides and the longer the deeply rooted element does not proc, the higher the chance for it to occur is. That basically guarantees that no matter how unlucky you are, you're going to see this happen at least several times during the fight. So be on your toes and be ready to take advantage of this spell when it occurs. Let's also mention your mana tide totem as one of the major cooldowns as it's 3 minutes and it restores some mana back to you. And everybody else in the raid. As I mentioned earlier try to pop it as early as you can so you get at least another use throughout the fight. Possibly more if the fight of course is longer. And then there's another talent that you can take along with the mana tide totem, spirit Walker tidal totem but I actually do not recommend this one. 
I see many shamans running it because it reduces both the cast time and the mana cost of your chain heal once you drop the mana tide. Which is not bad at all because it becomes a another cooldown that you can use to actually heal because the mana tide doesn't heal by itself. However, there's two downsides that I don't like about this talent. First, you're not going to be getting that much mana back because you'll be spamming chain heal like mad once you pop the mana tide. And second, your cast time reduction to chain heal is actually so huge already from the tidal waves and the tidebringer talents that it's quite possible it becomes shorter than your global cooldown so you end up waiting for your global cooldown to come off of cooldown so you can cast the next chain heal. So all of that makes me a big not fan of this talent but don't get me wrong it's actually quite a nice tool to have so if you think you can manage playing with it definitely give it a try and go for it. Before we wrap up everything with the talents let's talk about the stat priority for the raid. Item level and primary stat in the form of intellect is king and then after that you wanna stack critical strike. This not only makes your spells heal for more, but it also gives you a lot of mana back due to the resurgence talent. So once you get enough of that, you can turn your eyes towards the versatility and the mastery. The shaman actually scales quite nice with versatility, so getting more of that is never wrong. It also gives you some damage reduction, of course. And then the mastery makes you heal people for more based on the amount of health that they're missing. So mastery is very good for progression where people are taking a lot of unexpected damage. But later on on the tier mastery kind of loses a little bit to the versatility because people are having more gear, taking less damage, using their defensives more correctly, etc. So my recommendation is don't avoid mastery, it's not bad, but if you have choice between mastery and versatility, probably go with the verse. And finally, you can avoid the haste as much as possible in the raid because your chain heals are going to be extremely fast already based on the talents that we already saw and making them even faster with haste is just going to make you out of mana much quicker. At the end of the day, let's summarize everything with a talent build that you can use. You can find this in the description of this video if you want to just copy and paste it in game. It includes everything we mentioned so far and actually a few more things that I didn't mention. For example, the earth living weapon that I'm taking. You can use that to enhance your weapon instead of the weapon runes that we're using to get some extra healing out of it. On the left side you have some movement abilities, Windrush Totem which is a group movement skill and then your personal movement, either Gust of Wind or Spirit Walk. Don't forget your personal defensive as well. And then I'll mention one more change this tier, we're not taking Mana Spring because the amount of mana that it returns after casting Riptides is just very insignificant. It gives you 150 mana back and for example your chain heal costs 14,000 or something. So generally you can just invest that point elsewhere and get more value out of it. And that concludes the guide for the Restoration Shaman healing in rate for this tier. Do let me know if that was helpful to you or if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care, bye bye and get out of here.